Now it's time for RTB 101, where we discuss practical questions to help equip you to share your faith more effectively. And here to help me talk about a key feature of our testable creation model, once again, is Dr. Fuzz Rana. Welcome back, Fuzz. Krista, thanks for having me. This is such an important question because one of our core principles or distinctives here at Reasons to Believe is our testable creation model approach. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about just one slice okay. of that model, and that is the origins of life model. So let's start with a definition. What are we talking about when we talk about the origin of life? Yeah, well, when scientists use that term, what they're referring to is the events that led up to the very first appearance of cells on Earth, the very first life forms on Earth. And from an evolutionary perspective, uh, the argument would be that uh, simple me uh, molecules would have formed on the early Earth organic materials that would have accumulated in some environment on the Earth and undergone chemical complexification and organization to ultimately evolve through a chemical evolutionary process to the very first cells. Okay, so we're talking about cellular, single-celled organisms. Right. Life. We're not talking about whales or dinosaurs. We're right. talking about the first life forms on the early Earth. That's exactly right. Okay, and those came about some of the distinctive features of the evolutionary models, it came about through natural processes, right. chemical evolution, right. the just the right conditions on the right. surface of the earth right. so that this life could come about. That's right, and so if this explanation is valid, then one way to test it would be to ask, uh, are there chemical processes that could in principle contribute to chemical evolution and would those chemical processes operate under the conditions of the early earth? Also, evolutionary models would anticipate that the very first life forms on Earth would be extremely simple organisms and would have probably appeared over a protracted period of time, hundreds of millions of years, maybe even up to a billion years. So we would expect to see simpler life forms first mm -hmm. that then evolve into more and more complex life forms. Right. And we would expect to see some sort of process that they were kind of pre-life and then life and yes, some exactly. kind of stepwise fashion there. Exactly. Okay. Now, when we think about the, the model from a creation model standpoint right. that we put forth here at Reasons to Believe, how, what are some of the few of the features of our approach? Yeah, sure. Well, the, the primary view that we hold is that the origin of life and the fundamental design of life is ultimately the creator's handiwork where God is intervening in a direct way to create the very first cells on Earth. So it's a rejection of this idea of chemical evolution. Also, we think that Genesis 1-2 is the portion of the Genesis 1 creation account that is making an allusion to something akin to the origin of life or to the very first appearance of life on Earth. And so out of that, we would then expect that when that the very first life forms on earth should actually and all life on earth as a result of that should display evidence for design uh, in biochemical systems we we would also expect that the very first cells would be intrinsically complex and that life would appear suddenly on the early earth without any kind of evidence of a of an evolutionary history leading up to those very first cells. Very good. So maybe if people aren't quite familiar with Genesis 1-2, just a couple of, of things to highlight there in that verse. One is that the Spirit of God comes to hover over mm -hmm. the face of the earth. Right. The early earth is covered with water. Right. It's dark. Yeah. And it's, it's, a, hostile, it's a hostile environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And in fact, it's interesting that these are, this is exactly what we now understand the conditions of the early earth to be. And in fact, life does appear uh, under those very conditions on the early earth. So that aspect of our model has validation from the scientific evidence. So because of the Holy Spirit's presence there on the early earth, yeah. um, that is kind of what theologically undergirds the idea that life would have been formed, right. um, fully formed, fully functional, right. and not as a result of evolution that God did something to right. intervene to create the first life forms under those hostile conditions. Th yeah, that's exactly right. Okay, so when we think about this, when we're talking to a non-Christian, mm -hmm. how does this approach mm 
help us in doing our personal outreach and evangelism. I know you've got a couple of decades under your belt mm -hmm. of presenting this model to um, university audiences and, and other experts. Mm -hmm. How does this model help you? Yeah, well, instead of coming across as someone who's just simply interested in critiquing the evolutionary explanation for the origin of life, or, or just making some kind of case for design or a creator, what this approach does, because it emphasizes testability, each particular perspective has certain key predictions that flow out of the very nature of the, of the two different models. And then we can ask the question, what evidence that we have accumulated with regard to the origin of life best fits uh, each of the models? Which models really best fit the evidence? And so it invites people to interact with the model. It invites people to engage the model. And instead of uh, uh, essentially insisting on our particular perspective, we're inviting people to evaluate our ideas to see if it actually has merit to it. So it's a very different approach that's inviting, that's engaging. That's really helpful. So rather than um, sometimes Christians can be very stereotypical of just Darwin bashing, but this is a model that it kind of invites people to a conversation of, hey, let's look at the data. Mm -hmm. Let's look at these two competing models. Which one best explains the data? Yeah. If you're engaging somebody who is scientifically minded, they are going to have a high level of respect for the scientific method. And so what this approach is emphasizing is casting our, our case for a creator in scientific terms where we actually show how our model can be affirmed and how our model can be potentially falsified. And so that, again, garners respect among people who are scientifically minded. Very good, that's very helpful. And I wanna encourage people to check out your book, Origins of Life, where you go into these concepts in much more detail. What we've done here is just very uh, 30,000 feet, but uh, wanna encourage you to check out Fuzz's book, The Origins of Life.